Well, we got back from uh, the run yesterday and actually back home. And we had our runner's crate uh, waiting for us. And so we thought we'd show you what was in there. We don't know what's in there yet. So, Megan, you can go ahead and open it up. Okay. And then we thought we'd also tell you about the stuff we've been using from our runner's crate. Okay. So, so this is our May runner's crate. All right. This, I think, is the first time we have gotten clothing. A shirt, yeah. <laughs> it looks like. Nice little tech tee, and it says, I run for the medals, so. Is it medium? It is a men's medium. Cool. Hanes brand, so that's the first time we've gotten clothing. <laughs> Might make a good um, wear to the start line, throw off to the side type of a shirt. Nah. <laughs> All right, what else is in there? Okay, and then it looks like we've got um, a few things we have seen and a few things we have not. Um, okay, there is a T-Squares tea-infused energy snack. Seems to be like a little wafer cracker type thing. That's like a granola thing. Hmm. It's like a granola bar thing. Okay. Cool. It's got 30 milligrams of caffeine in it. Hmm. Right on. Um, it's hard. Crunchy. It's a caffeinated energy snack made with organic tea. Right on. Go for it. We got some Stinger Energy Gel. Chocolate. That's my kind of flavor. So. Not mine. Never really had the Stinger Energy Gels, but we've had a lot of the other Stinger stuff. I like the Stinger Energy Chews, which is perfect, because it looks like they give us some of those too. Yeah, those are good. Um, I These are not like my first choice for a race, but I take these on my long run sometimes, and they're just like fruit snacks. They're a little bit bigger, and this is the grapefruit flavor. And I actually, can like if I'm going on a long run for the weekend and I don't have my favorite kind of fuel, which we're gonna show you, um, I will even get these at Hy-Vee in the health market, and so these are easier for me to grab if we're here in town. Um, these are grapefruit flavored, so yummy. Yeah, I will not be using those. I don't like grapefruit, so yeah. Oh, Megan's. Uh, we've got Stinger honey waffles, which these are really good. We've had these before, and I really like these. They don't really seem to provide much actual like nutrition in these but they're really good just to actually eat and just the fuel with while just running because boost. it's just easy to easy to eat so and they're sweet yeah. and it's and it's just honey and so this one little this one little like wafer has 150 calories in it so but it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's yeah. much to it when you eat it like it just doesn't yeah it doesn't feel like it's fueling you fueling you um, and it looks like this is a new one, and I don't know how to pronounce this. Scratch. Is it just scratch? Yeah. Oh, they make it look weird. But we actually have, we got something else from this brand that was like a cookie mix, mm -hmm. and we haven't made them yet. It was in our runner's crate a couple times ago. This is a sport recovery drink mix with chocolate, and it's got probiotic cultures um, to support digestive health. So. What's the thing say? I bet it's like a chocolate. It's like a protein shake. One packet makes 12 ounces, and there are 200 calories. So, Scratch huh. is the brand. And we need to make the cookies that they, the cookie mix that we have from that brand, too. Yeah. Um, and we got a little Runner Crate sticker. Cute. Sweet. I've never gotten one of those before. What's this? And... Original Blue Emu Super Strength, I don't know, lotion, maybe. So we got a sample sachet and an Amazon coupon. It is Emu Oil, great for tired muscles and joints. <laughs> Perfect for today, post-race. Um, huh. You can buy it in a jar. So, and we got a coupon for $3 off a jar of it from Amazon. 
All right. It's a seven dollar jar. So that is what was in our May runner's crate and it came at a fun time because we just got back from our race weekend today with the kids. Yeah, we thought since we got the runner's crate, we'd show you some of the things we've actually been using from the runner's crate and most of it, I mean, the things we're gonna show you are stuff that we actually used uh, yesterday uh, during the race. So um, there's always a lot of fuel and stuff in, in the runner's crate. And one of the things that I used yesterday Actually, the only two, well, not the only two, I guess, uh, but two of the fuels that I used yesterday before the race, um, we didn't really eat much for breakfast. I think we just had, I don't even remember. I had a packet of oatmeal of the Better Oats brand I had oatmeal half and a half bagel. of a bagel. We shared yeah. a bagel on the way, yeah. um, but we were both hydrating quite a bit on our way down to the and race, the day too. Yeah, the day before, yeah. hydrating a lot, but... Yeah, I had a half a bagel, so I was kind of hungry before the race, and so I actually had um, this guy, this Noka superfood smoothie thing, and it was it was good. I really liked it, but it was coconut and mango, which is kind of a weird flavor, but that didn't really bother me too much. It was really thick, and it's definitely something that you wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to take it during a run, but it was really good before the race. I mean, it settled well and everything, so. I really like that, and that came in one of the runner's crates, and we'll probably look into getting some more of those. And I actually kind of like taking those, uh, like, just fruit and vegetable squeeze pouches you can get in, like, the baby food section before some of the long runs, so I actually like those. And the, the other thing that I fueled with during the run, and I talked about it in the video, was this uh, run performance gum. gum. And uh, I really enjoy that. I don't, I don't run with gum normally. Uh, I normally just put those gummies in my pocket, like the, the Stinger ones that we got today. Um, but I didn't have any of those, and so I just tossed this in my pocket. And uh, it worked out really well for me. I really enjoyed it. So kind of a weird texture there at the start. But after once you got started chewing on it, it was, it was good. But I fueled with both of those, which came from our runner's crate. And then... Uh, I had also just fueled with a just a regular goo, but this is a tri-berry one I picked up during the race that I didn't use. I don't really like the fruit goos, but I like the vanilla chocolatey ones, so that's what I had during the run. And I do not. They were giving those out on the race course, and I did not take any. Um, and I actually, I got, I was feeling really hungry before the race started, which I don't usually feel. Um, I've actually been really hungry all week this past week. I think just the time of year we're super busy, but. Um, so I actually took what I was fueling with during the race and I took an extra one before the race even started. And this is pretty much the only thing I have found. I don't like to go like lots of different variety. I have found these Huma Chia gels um, and it is the lemonade flavor. I like it because it's just like citrusy and it kind of like wakes you up a little bit when you're running and if you, your mouth is dry. Um, and I have found that I like these, so I just buy them from Amazon in a box of like 24 of them, and they're actually part of our prime pantry right now. Yeah. Um, so I get I get a box, I think, every two months, I think. Um, and I only use these on my long runs for training and for races, and I really only use one if I'm going to go like eight miles or more, um, if I'm going to be out for like more than an hour 20 um, to fuel a little bit. So um, I took, I had a question on one of my, um, I posted about the race yesterday on one of my like run groups and I had a question about like how many I took and how frequently and I, each one of these little guys is 100 calories and I try to take one like every three and a half to four miles so I took three of them during the race yesterday and I definitely think that that helped keep me going because the race was really hot and I ran way harder than I had planned to run so. <laughs> These little guys kept me going, and they have um, quite a bit of caffeine in them too, so they're pretty tasty. But I had, I guess, I took four if you count the one that I took right before the race started. You so took four, yeah, wow. one before and three during the oh, race. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you're supposed to fuel like every forty to forty-five minutes is what, kind of what yeah. the rule of thumb is. And um, I didn't fuel very very much yesterday, and. Like I said in the video, I a month ago I I ran a fifty k and fueled really well and focused on that. That was my first time doing that as a trail run. There's a lot of climb with it, and 
I actually make, we make our own fuel. I eat it, I take it on all my long runs, but, and we'll talk about that sometime in a video, but um, we, I don't normally take goos and, and stuff like that. I like the humachias as well, but I just make my own and uh, I take a lot of those because it's cheaper. So there's a, there's a lot of other things in our runner's crate that we actually used yesterday. Uh, one of the things we used yesterday and on some of the field trips we've had recently is uh, this wet skin um, sunscreen and it works it works really well I mean I didn't have any problems with anything and it's just 30 SPF and it's spray on and we've got like two we've or three of three these. of them we've yeah. gotten one spray bottle and then two tubes of just like rub on and runners crate actually sent us like the full size um, containers of those yeah. not not like a sample size so and those I mean and that's worked really well and then uh, another thing that I used yesterday um, I had said in some of the other videos and stuff that my ankle was bothering me uh, yeah, <laughs> so, um, is, uh, they, they sent us this calf sleeve, uh, this Zinsa or however you say that calf sleeve. And I wore these, um, on my calves during the 50 K a month ago, but I actually wore this yesterday on my ankle, um, for be just because it was kind of, it was still kind of bothering me. So, um, I actually wore this on my right ankle and then I wore an actual ankle sleeve on my left ankle, the one that had been uh, had been bothering me on some of my other runs and stuff but that came in a, in a runner's crate and we've definitely been using those so it worked really well um, and then something else that I use um, one of my friends had asked about uh, hydrating and um, I, I carried this with me and I ran a marathon last fall in September and luckily one of our friends our friend Crystal actually uh, caught up to me and I was dying and she had water on her and I just felt ridiculous I just felt like an idiot for not having been carrying water with me and it was it was a well aided event a well aided but run. it was also like it was between hot. 75 <laughs> and 80 degrees and I was running too fast so um, but ever since then I've started carrying this uh, and this is a hydroclick uh, water bottle and it just has a little snappy thing on there and I I just snap it on my shorts and actually on my underwear too But and this um, one like the water bottle comes out yep. And so like um, when he was running his 50k We actually have I have two little like similarly sized water bottles from a hydration belt that I tried that I didn't really like um, But they fit inside of here and so when he was running his 50k like he could have one running and then I was like refilling one to have it ready to go so that when he came to the aid spot like he could just toss out the empty one and put right. the full one in um, and, uh, and it has little pockets on it too so like if you wanted to stick your little gel and have your you know your fuel and your water there and it, it's worked really well I used it yesterday at, at one point I mean I carried it the whole time but I really only took like one drink out of it and like we kind of mentioned earlier, uh, yesterday we really hydrated. I focused on hydrating the day before the run. Because I did I, probably for like two or three days leading up to the run. Because I knew that it was going to be warm and everything and I wanted yeah. to be well hydrated going into it. Um, yeah. And I also yesterday during the half, I, I walked through all the water stations and they not. were about two miles apart. All of them were the odd miles. Yeah. It was a very well um, supported yeah. race, a Bridge the Gap was. I also place. carried water with me. I This is my only water bottle that I ever run with on long runs and it's the Nathan um, brand water little water bottle, hydration bottle. Um, and I got it off of Amazon and it's super cheap. Um, but I don't even know how many ounces it is, but it's bigger than the one that Kenneth carries and this little sleeve just comes off of it. And so I just fill up my water bottle and I actually filled it up the night before and I put mine in the freezer so that it would all be frozen and then it was thawed out probably by like the end of the first 5k and I had actually drank most of it by that point and I actually stopped at at least two maybe even three of the water stops um, just barely stopped and as I was approaching the water stop I would like undo the lid and hold it out and have them the people with the little cups just like dump it in here so I was drinking water the entire race um, I also though um, Hatcher our youngest is still breastfeeding so um, it was way important for me to make sure that I was hydrating really well um, during the race and so I was really happy to have that and actually <laughs> Um, it, it can be kind of annoying. I switch it from back and forth from hand 
um, between my hands. I was really annoyed because I started off in sunglasses yesterday and if you watch the video of what the weather was like, it was so humid and foggy that my sunglasses <laughs> kept fogging over. So I ended up like taking my sunglasses off and I was holding like my water bottle and I had my sunglasses like folded. So I was running with like my glasses and my water bottle the whole time, which was really annoying. Plus then I would be like taking out a gel and I would have it in the other hand, like trying to eat it while I was running. Um, but once I emptied my little pouch out, which this is where I keep kept all my little gels for my, for the race. So once I emptied it out, I was like, Ooh, I wonder if my sunglasses can fit. And I did I like shove my sunglasses down in my little pouch to finish the race. But I was really glad I had that. I mean, I could have definitely survived without it, but being able to just like take little tiny sips rather than having to like chug a whole little cup from the water station and then you feel kind of like sloshy running off after that i like to be able to have my water in my hand with me so i just chug the water um <laughs> and inside of our water we also um right i did this one yeah, we, we don't normally do that one though we did a noon, a noon tablet inside of our water bottle. So if you don't know about those, um, we caught onto those probably about three years ago, but they're just little tablets that dissolve. Um, it's a electrolyte tablet. So be kind of like a Gatorade, but without the sugar. Yeah. And um, so I had one of those to for my first one to start out. And I actually, um, had been doing those throughout the day, like starting like t for the two days before the race too. I was drinking quite a bit of that. And there's quite a bit of sodium in those too, which is helpful because we were so sweaty yesterday. And I did drink a whopping half of one of the little Dixie cups of Gatorade because I can't I can't drink Gatorade like that while running. It just, it does not I can't settle either. well in my stomach. But so. noon is really gentle, so. And then probably really the only other thing that we used yesterday that wasn't, you know, this we didn't get from a runner's crate, something we had purchased ourselves. Uh, it's definitely a lifesaver when it's hot outside. And if you can't see what that is, uh, that's just some uh, little chafing stuff there. <laughs> so uh, it, uh, I, it's a lifesaver. I mean, if you have not invested in, t in any type of anti-chafe product, then... Uh, I would highly suggest that. So, um, other than that, I mean, that's really about all the things that I use. Um, so, I think that's about it for for all of these things. So, we uh, we really enjoy getting the runners crate, and uh, our friend Chris, uh, who's also a runner, although he's injured right now, is the one who originally is the one who signed us up for runners crate, and uh, it's been awesome to get every month. Uh, we really like getting the fuels and just trying some different fuels and stuff. Uh, we really like the Stinger fuels, and uh, we're really happy that those have been in there and trying those out. So there's been a lot of scratch project products in there recently, and uh, we haven't really tried those, but you know I'm excited to try out that cookie mix and uh, this drink mix as, as well to see how, how that is. So, mm -hmm. um, But there's been lots of products in there that we've, we've really enjoyed using, and uh, we think, I mean, we think the runner crate's a, a pretty awesome thing. So. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you are someone who is running and training frequently throughout the week, it's good stuff. So, we have a few other things coming up, um, you know, here in the future, but uh, we've got, we're toying with the idea of uh, Megan doing part of the, the gravel classic that the goats put on uh, up in Omaha and uh, Memorial Day weekend, uh, toying with Megan doing that, and I'll hang with the kids during that. And um, additionally, we have uh, Dam to Dam in Des Moines coming up on June 2nd. That's a 20K this year, so it's like a almost just shy of 13 mile run um, for that, and a uh, very social atmosphere afterwards, so we're looking forward to that. And then uh, June 16th, we have a uh, we're hosting a 5K, uh, Runaway Bride 5K, at, at our house here in Maryville, actually, um, for our five-year wedding anniversary. So if you're one of our friends or a running person or someone who would like to find out some more about that, just let us know. We can certainly send you the uh, invitation for it, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So it'll be on the, the bicycle trail, the chat gravel trail here that's pretty close to our house, so that'll, that'll be a really good time <laughs> so um, 
Other than that, just a little post-race, I mean, the next day thing, usually for me, it kind of takes two days uh, for the soreness to kind of kick in, but uh, after driving back today, um, you know, my quads are a little tight, they always seem to be, but um, I plan on running, oh, probably four or five miles tonight if I get time, uh, just to kind of stay in that ultra mode, uh, to kind of stay in that marathon and ultra marathon training mode, so doing back-to-back -back days like that. But uh, my, my watch actually said that yesterday's run was only like a 2.2 on the scale for me or something, which is like a very low workout. So uh, I didn't push myself real hard there at the end. I just didn't really feel like it. And uh, my body's feeling okay. I'm all right. So. I, however, <laughs> had gone into the race with like no expectations. It was my first half um after baby number three which i realized was a year ago but i've taken a really slow comeback from having hatcher i was actually um signed up to do the liberty half in march and um decided not to because the weeks leading the couple weeks leading up to that race i was having a lot of hip pain um and just tired like hatcher's not sleeping through the night yet and um i'd really hit some like Three, two or three weeks of hard speed work plus cross training and my body was just feeling it and I want to be able to run through the summer and have a good time with all of our races and my big 2018 race goal is um that I really want to do my first full marathon and I knew if I pushed it too hard that I'm going to end up crashing and not being able to do that so um I went in yesterday just wanting to have fun which um funny enough two different people during and right after the race um, made com complete strangers who were also running the race with us made comments to me about one said you're so happy and then afterwards a guy that I had ran behind for a little while um, had commented and he was like I just don't know how you're so happy <laughs> and so um, my goal was to run happy which I obviously met that goal and um, after the 10k mark I realized that I had run a pretty solid first half and I felt really well. So I thought Megan's 10k time for the half was faster than mine. So she ran pretty hard there. <laughs> so but I was, was feeling really good. And so like unfortunately, I do still have a competitive nature even though I didn't <laughs> really plan to run fast. I also do know that it was my fifth half marathon and I have never ran a half marathon slower than the two hour mark. Um, when there's nothing wrong with that, I just realized at that point that I could maybe get a fifth half marathon in under two hours. Now that's still a good 15 minutes away from my PR, but I wasn't even thinking close about that. So um, I decided to just keep on rolling pretty fast. And there were a few people like ahead of me that I could tell were running pretty like manageable paces. And I kind of just like started to reel them in a little bit, which is a strategy <laughs> that I use. Um, also, it really motivates me just to like soak up energy from other people. And this course was kind of funky. Like it had a lot of like, out and then back and then like out and back and so there were what four or five different yeah, points well, all the times in the video yeah each time in the video other. that you saw kenneth like meeting me is because he was ahead of me and i had already yeah. made like a turnaround so like on every little leg out um we would get to a certain point and i would start to see like all like the first 30 <laughs> people in the race and so um, I didn't realize we were going to see them that many times, but I started cheering for them. And like sometimes people are really annoyed by that. And there were probably a few that were annoyed <laughs> by that. that. <laughs> but a lot of other people, like it kind of perked them up a little bit. And so I realized that cheering for everyone, A, distracted me from any pain that I might be feeling. And then B, it like lifted them up a little bit. And then it also, then I kind of soaked up a little bit of that energy. And um, after the race, the first place female, who I think was like fifth or sixth overall, she did a, she had a really good race. Um, I saw her like in the finishing corral area getting some food and she like came and like patted me on the back and she was like, hey, thanks for all that cheering. Like she really enjoyed it. And so I think that honestly kind of like caused me to push a little bit extra, but because of that, I cannot even walk up and down the stairs <laughs> and hold the baby at the same time safely today. My quads 
are just completely wrecked and I'm okay with that because I've been coming back really easy and I kind of showed myself yesterday that um, I can still run hard and it felt really good so I'm okay with he's still gonna run today and tomorrow I may honestly take three or four days off we have damn to damn in what two weekends right. um, and I would really love to just soak up all of the speed that I did yesterday, um, let my body recover, and then kind of go into like a repeat taper almost as we head into Dam to Dam. So um, yeah, that's how we're feeling. Um, it was a really awesome weekend. I think that that race is one we would definitely do again. It was very well organized and the support, like the volunteers were really awesome. And even the post race, I was super impressed. It was a really clean, uh, pretty area down on the river um, in Quincy. And they had um, tons of choices for like post race food yeah. and snacks and stuff. And there was music um, and there was, the and local was running store had a booth set up. Um, and it was, I mean, it was a cheap run too. I mean, it's not very expensive to register for it. I know it was a Christmas present for us, but um, it wasn't real expensive to register in the first place. And the money actually goes to the Bridge the Gap like foundation, which uh, helps provide uh, medication and medical support for those that, that cannot afford it. And uh, they have all the statistics and stuff there up on their website if you just look for Bridge the Gap. But um, it, uh, it was, like Megan said, it was, it was really neat. We like to do those races that helps out a good cause, and that was, that was definitely one of them. So yeah. if you're looking for a, a nice May half marathon or 10K or something to do, then uh, there might be one for you to check out. So Yeah. Nap time is ending. We have small children coming down, but um, I don't know. We may play around with giving you these little race reports and uh, post-race info things um, in the future. So stay tuned. We'll see you later. Oh yeah, and uh, you guys, you may have seen Barley on one of the other videos, but um, this is how he's feeling he, post uh, race week. He just hopped up there right before we started recording and decided that uh, this is where he needed to sleep. So when and I kept snore loudly, <laughs> and I kept giggling and looking over my shoulder, it's because Barley was snoring and twitching while we were trying to record this. So. <laughs> We have a lovely support crew back there, so don't worry, Barley get his mile in today too. Hashtag so. Barley the Beagle. <laughs> Hinton. Okay. Everybody woke up, so not gonna run right now. We're gonna try and go for a bike ride. Hinton, look up here. It's raining a little bit, so we'll see how far we get. Well, we decided to go down the bike trail and uh, which is interesting since I don't really have a mountain bike on this chat slash dirt but it's all right still raining passenger bailed on me and we had to put up the uh, cover on the trailer but uh, it's always nice to be out here on the trail it's real pretty a nice view. Hopefully, you can see that okay. Not the easiest pedaling, but uh, we're getting there. I'll probably still try and run tonight. Got to do at least a mile. So, this is where our runaway bride 5k will be, too, on this trail nice and flat should be a good run if you want to come join us
Well, as you may have noticed, uh, it's dark outside. I uh, just finished stocking my second job just a little bit ago. It's only, you know, 11.40 at night, but uh, I'm getting my mile in, so I maintain my streak. Uh, did not get to run after run four or five miles after recording the first part of the video. Uh, Harper and Hinton woke up, so we went for a bike ride. That turned into just about 10 miles of me pulling 60 pounds in the trailer in the rain, so that was good. So, just to get my mile in, so I can maintain the streak. My quads do not feel good at all after that bike ride. But well, that's okay. So, be done here in just a little bit. And then uh, we'll get all the wood. Hopefully, I'll get the video uploaded here. So, that's about it. It is kind of pretty running at night, though. There's nobody out. <laughs> But, I mean, campus is neat over there. Made it home. Uh, gotta be up in like six hours for school tomorrow, so it's the second to last day of school. So, probably should go inside and go to bed. But, uh, yeah, it was a good day. And, uh, probably take a rest day tomorrow, so. <laughs> But that's about it. Made it home. Got the mile in. So, good night.